gives me great pleasure this morning uh, to welcome you in Johannesburg uh, to our 2018 Hot Topics Summit. As introduced, I'm Andrew Darfall. I'm the Group Chief Executive of Alexander Falls. So in today's um, Hot Topics Summit, as we've just seen in the video, we're going to be trying to be quite provocative. We're going to be not just announcing some of the key themes in our 2018 Benefits Barometer, but we're going to be challenging you to think differently. We're going to be challenging you to think about the role of an ecosystem that brings together the individual, the corporate, society, and communities to drive better outcomes. However, before I start, it'll be a miss of me not to spend a moment or two talking about Alexander Falls. So we were founded in 1935, and 1935 was a great year. Now, does anyone here know why 1935 was a great year? No? No ideas? It was the year South Africa beat England at cricket. In Lords, the home of cricket, for the very first time. But in all seriousness, um, since 1935, we were founded as a company called Price Forbes, under the leadership of a gentleman called Gordon Douglas. And the foundation of the business was really, we were the first company to introduce a Lloyd's contract to import Rothman's cigarettes and Mum's champagne into South Africa and Johannesburg. That was the foundation of Alexander Falls in 1935. So we were a cigarette and champagne importer. Well, as you can see, we're no longer in that business. And, and I would argue over the course of the next um, uh, eight decades or so, we've seen growth. It's been a journey of growth. It's also been a journey of pioneering, evolution. And over that eight decade period, we've reshaped ourselves to really challenge the industry. And there have been many firsts that we've done. In 2017, um, we put together a bold new strategy, a bold new vision, which we called Ambition 2022. Now the concept of Ambition 2022 is really a lifetime. It's a lifetime of advice and solutions for our clients. Now the concept of this lifetime you know, really plays well into today's Hot Topics um, theme in that we subscribe that for many individuals, money is not the end objective at all. It's really a state of wellness, a state of wellness that can only be attained, we believe, when we bring together the physical, the emotional, the health, and financial wellness of individuals. The question is, how do we get there? So let's get on to um, this year's benefits barometer. So for me, it's interesting, as I travel through our various markets um, and countries, and I often have the opportunity to reflect on what are the most pressing issues uh, facing the workforce of the future. And how do employers and employees adapt to address these questions? So it's really an evolving picture. And the answer, I believe, is that social mobility is quite important. So when, when we think about this year's benefits barometer, I try and apply it back to the great responsibility we have at Alexander Falls. So when we think about assets under management or assets under administration or assets under advice, you know, we manage just over one trillion rand. Now that's a great responsibility. Now I think about what we pay out in terms of benefit payments. Last year we paid out just over 26 billion in benefit payments. I think about insurance claims. We paid out last year over 1.6 billion in insurance claims. And that is a, a great responsibility. However, for the last five years, in our benefits barometer. Here's what we've argued. We've argued that we've got to develop this concept of financial well-being under a belief that for individuals and their families, wellness can only be achieved with policymakers making the right decisions. So employers, policymakers, make the right decisions, you achieve wellness. But I think, as we're gonna highlight this year, we're challenging that narrative. We think it's broader than that. 
It's broader than just the, the government. It's broader than just the employer and the employee. It's also about communities. It's also about society working together to drive inclusive growth. So here's what we, we, we argue. We argue that there are various stakeholders in this. And the various stakeholders here are the economy, the community, the workplace, and the individual. All having to work together to create this cohesive social ecosystem working together. If that doesn't happen, then growth doesn't make sense. So when we think about what President Ramaphosa's rallying cry of Tuma Mina, or send me. And incidentally, um, I had the great privilege of meeting President Ramaphosa's economic advisor this morning. And um, so a big, big shout to, um, to her. She's in the audience somewhere um, as, as our invited guest. The fact is that 42% of South Africans today have access to informal financial solutions as well as formal financial solutions, 42%. But how does that translate to the fact that only 6% of South Africans can reach retirement with any level of certainty or dignity? It just, just doesn't make sense, does it? So what that says, 42% of us have access to financial solutions, but only 6% can retire with dignity. Therefore, I argue the financial services industry has failed in driving better outcomes for individuals as they aim to reach retirement. So, this is quite serious. And so I think in this year's publication, we're trying to answer or, or address a number of key questions. So what are the questions we're trying to address? What are the barriers to achieving a well-being society? And how do we know when we get there? Well, right now, we're not there, because 94% of people cannot retire with any level of certainty or dignity. Two-thirds of all households are in debt. Unemployment has just risen to 27.2%. Companies aren't creating jobs. So that is the construct we're facing right now. Second question, how do we subscribe to the notion of well-being for the individual and the economy or put another way, what must financial services providers do differently? And what is the role they play? It's a very critical role. So let me ask you a question. As senior leaders, as senior practitioners, what is your company doing in its communities? How is your company managing the impact on the environment? What are you doing to create a more diverse and inclusive workforce? How are you using behavioral science, artificial intelligence, and other tools to prepare your employees for this new workforce of the future? How are you creating a culture of continuous learning? Now, why are these questions so important? Because they drive job creation. They drive better outcomes for people. So these are some of the themes that we're looking to explore. And it's really around how can the workplace work together in this social compact. Communities, society, workforce, workplace, individuals to drive better outcomes. So this, this slide is really the key slide. And we're talking about the concept of a multi-stakeholder. So success in the world of a multi-stakeholder is providing a framework that creates a workforce that cares for the emotional, the social needs of employees in a more meaningful way. It's about creating real impact. So I would argue that a multi-stakeholder collaboration process balances growth, development, promotion of individuals to re reach the right <coughs> outcomes. So this year, the benefits barometer 2018 is going to be launched as a digital crowdsourcing vehicle. So what does that mean? 
It means we want to facilitate conversations. We want to facilitate conversations with these multi-stakeholders collaborating to drive change in a meaningful way. Now, this just might work, but it will only work if the conversations are honest and seek to address the questions. So the vision is to create a framework for those conversations. It's to delve into what drives well-being, delve into what's necessary for this ecosystem, linking the economy, communities, and the workplace and together. But here's another fact for you. The poverty gap in South Africa is rising, with over 30 million people estimated living in poverty. Over 30 million. High levels of household debt, which in turn leaves very little disposable income for people, yet alone for them to save anything. Over 9.3 million people unemployed as a result of companies simply not investing enough to create work or employment. So the thesis we have to put forward is that South Africa needs solutions, and it needs them fast. And in doing so, we simply cannot afford to ignore the pivotal role the workplace, the employer, can play in improving outcomes. That is the topic we're going to explore today in this summit. So in closing, we want you to think differently today. We want you to form part of this crowdsourcing social compact, challenging conventional thinking. So as you listen to the various topics, the various presenters, we'll all bring it together, but we've got to do something differently. The current situation is not sustainable, and I think all corporates have a role to play as part of the social compact. So thank you for listening. I hope you have a, a great rest of the summit. Thank you.